morning once again uh welcome to this class for database concurrency and uh, we are continuing from where we stopped off last week so uh today's work shall be continuing from where we stopped off last week last week you are looking at techniques that are used for handling concurrency and we had discussed one technique which was the which were which were the locks now today uh the other methods that which we want to look at today is uh how other methods of concurrency control uh these are aspects like timestamps and uh other aspects which we would like to be able to understand and know how they function so uh welcome to this class uh as usual uh you know the procedure the protocol I will upload the notes on the I will upload the notes on YouTube and then I will uh, basically give you uh, the link to where you can be able to to, 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 to link where you can be able to look at uh, uh, to, to, to get to get to get them uh, there and also share notes on these aspects of uh, uh, locking and uh, also the other thing which we are going to look at today so that's what we intended to do today so it's basically a continuation of uh, where we had left the last time mm, yeah. so basically we are looking at uh, methods just a continuation on methods used to implement currency control. In a database, we have looked at locking, we have looked at binary locks and uh, 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 binary locks and shared or exclusive locks and we have discussed what they are we have also i also talked about the two-phase locking and there was the normal two-phase locking and the strict two-phase locking and i explained why it is that we need uh, these aspects of locking okay and i uh, gave you that work to go and look at uh, those two examples of uh, conservative 2pl and strict 2pl the things which you are there to go and read and uh, look about. Now, uh, today, before we continue, uh, uh, be, before before we continue with other aspects of uh, locking, I would like to talk about uh, something we call deadlocks. I'd like to talk about deadlocks. So today, too, it's just a deviation. Is just a deviation from the normal operation of, of, of what we are to discuss. So it's just a deviation. Before we discuss timestamps, the deviation is about deadlocks. And deadlocks usually occur with locking protocols. I think that is one of the most uh, disadvantaged issue with uh, locking protocols, the aspect of deadlocks. And deadlocks occurs when one transaction waits indefinitely for a resource that is held by another transaction. So it occurs when one transaction, one transaction waits indefinitely for a resource that is in use by another transaction. And thus, this transaction cannot proceed anywhere without the use of that resource. So that is what a deadlock purely means. Okay, that's what deadlock purely means. And in deadlocks, we want to understand uh, what we have uh, for for that kind of deadlock. And it's not only for one scenario where, because when one transaction is definitely for a resource that is used by another transaction, and that other transaction, sorry, and that other transaction waits for a resource in use by the requesting transaction. Requesting transaction. So 
So deadlock, what it basically means is that I might be having a transaction here. So you have something like a cyclic, a cyclic aspect of a transaction, uh, whereby I have one transaction here. Let's call it trans transaction T1. Call it T1. Then we have another transaction here. Let's call it T2. And now the problem is that T1 waits for this resource. T1 has a resource which T2 needs, and T2 needs a resource which T1 has. So we have a sort of something we call cyclic, cyclic weight graphs. We have something we call cyclic weight graphs. And this usually occurs in locking, in locking mechanisms, whereby you have a transaction, you have locked a transaction, which is using a certain resource, and that resource is now, is now being requested by another transaction, which has another resource, which you yourself need, leading to what we call deadlocks. So that's what we have with deadlocks, okay? So deadlock is also, is possible when you're having with, uh, when you're having two or more transactions that are involved. So with dead drops, that is what we have with cyclic weight graphs and everything. So this is an example of a cyclic weight graph here that is usually brought about by the deadlocks. Now, how do we detect deadlocks? So there's only one way with which we can detect deadlocks using something we call uh, using weight for graph using weight for graph that is how we can be able to detect deadlocks using weight for graphs that's the only way you can be able to detect deadlocks using weight for graphs so it is actually very important that you be able to handle that aspect of deadlocks using weight for graph okay one node is created. So how does this wait for graph uh, actually behave? So how does it uh, actually behave? Okay, let me just, uh, I want to create more space yeah, there. So how does it actually behave? The wait for graph. So what the wait for graph actually is, uh, you have to create a node. One node is created in the graph voice transaction, which is currently executing. So that's the first thing you have to do. You have to create a node for each transaction. So one, you create a node for each transaction that is executing. Executing in the database. And you have created that. So when you have created that node, whenever a transaction let's say for example, TI, whenever transaction TI is waiting to lock on an item X that is currently locked by transaction TJ, it creates a directed edge. When TJ releases the lock on the items, then the TI is waiting for the directed edge is dropped from the waiting graph. Okay. I believe you remember when you're talking about directed edges. Basically, okay, here. Basically, uh, let's say let's take for example these two graphs which I had here. I had these two objects here, T1 and T2. So what it basically means is that T1 is a node. T2 is another node. And now um, these two transactions are executing. So what it means is that in the first scenario is that T1 uh, has a resource which T2 needs to, which T2 needs to operate. So meaning that whenever transaction, let's say T1 is waiting to lock an item X that is currently locked by transaction T2, 
it creates a directed edge. Now, this is what we call a directed edge. A directed edge is just a part linking two different nodes in a graph. Remember graph graphs from your data structures and algorithm. We remember we had directed edges and non-directed edges, but this one here is means it's a directed edge. Meaning with this directed edge, it means that T1 is waiting to transact on a resource that is held by T2. So it means that T2 has to finish up with that resource so that T1 can be able to transact. So what it means is that when T2 now releases the, the, the what, the, when it releases the, 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 the item that is working on, then the edge is dropped. So meaning that now the transaction, this one, this one has finished transacting. Now, I mean, this one, T1 has finished transacting, so T2 is continuing transacting. We only have a problem if T1 is waiting for a resource from T2 and T2 is waiting for a resource from T1. And that's why I was giving that example whereby we have cyclic weight graphs. So one way to detect deadlocks is using weight graphs. But when we're having cyclic, a cyclic weight graphs, then we have an issue whereby we must kill one of those transactions. And it's a really big issue when it comes to concurrency control, whereby you have to deny execution of a node or of a transaction because of a cyclic weight graph. Okay, so we have a state of a deadlock even only if the weight graph has a cycle. And remember, that is what we have here, cyclic weight graphs. That's why I said this is what is called a cyclic weight graph. So we only have a state of a deadlock if So basically, weight graphs are used for detecting deadlocks. But if these weight graphs have cycles, they have this is a cycle, then you are going to have a deadlock. Okay, we are going to have a deadlock. And deadlock, I said, is whereby you waiting for a resource that is in use by another transaction, and that transaction is waiting for you to currently finish up on another on another resource, which you yourself you are also using up at that particular moment. So, locking protocols. So we usually have those, those examples, okay? The wait for, okay? The wait for graph. So this is what is called cyclic wait graphs, wait for graphs, okay? Now, uh, one problem with, so as I say, this is one, this is one method of uh, detecting deadlocks using wait for graphs. But as I said, one problem with wait for graphs, we may have cyclic wait graphs. It's a very good aspect whereby you create directed edges so that if this transaction needs this, if this transaction needs a resource held by T1, then it will have to wait for T1 to finish and then it, it, takes, the, it takes the resource and then it drops the edge. We have a problem if we have cycles in that, in that graph. That's why we're having a problem with the cyclic weight graphs. Now, one problem, another problem with using the weight for graph for deadlock detection is the matter of determining when the system should check for deadlock. So that is another problem. So another problem is this. So let me just put them here. So that's a problem which you or using this system will usually result in. Okay, let me just try and uh, lengthen this. Uh, yep, like that. So one problem of using the wait for graph. Okay, let me just try and uh, put this thing here. So deadlocks, we have this here. So let me just move this. I want to put it here somewhere as one of the problems involved with uh, such a scenario. Okay, 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 yeah. 
Okay. So, not one problem, another problem. So the first problem is you have cyclic cycles in that, uh, in that weight for graph. Another problem is matter of determining when the system should check for a deadlock. Criteria such as the number of concurrently executed transactions, the period of time several transactions will be waiting to lock it may be used to determine whether the system should check for deadlock. So the criteria, okay, the criteria, maybe these things have been in deadlock for only one second. Is it a deadlock? Or maybe one thing it may be is that, is that uh, maybe this transaction at the end of the day, it's a cycle, but then it will, it will, it will decide, I don't need the resources by T1. Then it will release the, 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 the what, the, 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 the resource and then T1 will execute. So, that is another problem. When should we check for a deadlock? What criteria should we have so as to determine whether a deadlock can or not occur in this kind of a scenario? So that's why we have that aspect of, uh, of, 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 of cyclic redundancy in this aspect. So what it basically means is that with this kind of an aspect, then we have to be sure of how we are going to solve this aspect of deadlock. So we say that one way is having when we having when we having that wait for wait for graphs. So one way when we when when when, when we are having this kind of a, of a scenario, the only way I say that the only way we can be able to to solve such a kind of a scenario is if we are bought. The only solution is to abort. Solution is to abort transaction. That's the only solution to abort. And aborting means you kill. Now, the criteria which is used to kill another transaction is whereby there's also another big issue. Okay. So we have to have an algorithm which is efficient in such a way that it will check how long that transaction uh, has been running and how many updates has performed. And should try to select transactions that have not made many changes or, are, or that are involved in more than one deadlock cycle in the wait for graph. So that is one way in which we can be able to abort. So when you are aborting, you have to check at the history of the transaction. The priority, the updates made the updates what made that is what we have with this thing okay so you have to check the history you have to check uh, the, the 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 priority is is, is is this is this a priority transaction and the updates made because if t2 has made several updates then we cannot ab abort t2 we only have to abort t1 because t1 maybe has started operating at that time or for example, if T1 was in operation for a long period of time and T2 requests started starts a transaction after T1 and then requests for a resource while T1 is still in operation, then technically we cannot abort T1, we can only abort T, T2. So that's why I'm talking about history. History looks at the time. How long has this transaction been in execution? If a transaction has been in execution for a long time, technically we cannot abort that transaction, meaning because of the number of updates that transaction has made, Hence, we have to look even, as I said, at the updates made, the changes made. And also, we also look at the priority. If a transaction has made several updates and it has a long history of transaction, it has executed in a long time, thus it means its priority is higher than a transaction that has come just now and it's wanting to make a transaction or a change. Okay, that's one thing. Now, one thing, a problem, another problem which can occur, I've talked about two problems when you're using wait for graph. It, although it's a good method is to detect deadlocks using with locks. We've talked about cyclic weight graphs. Another one is to determine which criteria to check for a deadlock. 
Another problem would be if when you are porting this transaction and then only to restart it for it to enter into another deadlock. That is what we call a cyclic. Uh, we, 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 call, we, we, we call it a cyclic restart. So another problem here, which can be, which is of a very bad thing, is something we call cyclic restart. Cyclic restart is whereby you restart a transaction, you are bought a transaction and restart it only for it to enter another deadlock. Let me just write DL means deadlock scenario. So that is what you call cyclic restart. So it's also another issue. It's also another issue which is bad for deadlocks. So deadlocks are quite cumbersome aspects, which 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 are which 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 uh, which, which, which also instead of uh, you preventing a deadlock, it brings about another aspect of a deadlock. So. With wait for graphs, we have that problem. We have cyclic restart. And I said locking protocols, deviation at the lead locks. And the one way we can do it is having what we call wait for graphs. So detecting deadlocks using wait for graphs. So that's one method. And I've said that with wait for graphs, you create a node for each transaction executed in the database. When a transaction is waiting to lock on an item X that is currently locked by transaction TJ, it creates a directed edge, like the ones which I've shown here. The only problem occurs if we have two directed edges, which we have cyclic, meaning that one transaction is waiting for a resource in another transaction, and that same transaction needs a resource from the waiting transaction. So we have cyclic wait traps, and the only solution is to abort a transaction, to kill a transaction. And if you kill a transaction, you can have a problem whereby you might have a cyclic restart, whereby when you restart that aborted transaction, it goes into another deadlock. So we need to have better ways. So wait for graphs, yeah, it is a mechanism used to handle deadlocks, which is in, uh, in, 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 locking, in, in locking protocols, but it has those scenarios, it has those problems. So how did we, what is another way to solve such kind of a mess? The only other way to such, such kind, kind of a mess is by having something we call ordering data items. So, the only way you can be able to handle such kind of a mess, handling the mess of weight or graphs is by ordering. By ordering data items. Is by ordering data items prevent deadlocks. So you order data items, okay? So you use, this is a mechanism for deadlock prevention protocol. So this is a deadlock prevention protocol. So a protocol is basically a mechanism which explains or details to you from your networking, details to you how to carry out a particular transaction. So, uh, it requires that every transaction lock all the items in advance, and it's mostly used in conservative to PL. Used in conservative to PL. Remember, we talked about strict and conservative to PL, whereby in both of them you require for you to have a lock in advance on another item before you even start execution. So it requires the transaction lock all the items it needs in advance. If any of the items cannot be obtained, none of the items are locked. Rather, the transaction waits and then tries again to lock the item it needs. So that is how it works. It requires. That is how this thing occurs. It works like. It requires that every transaction locks all the item it needs in advance. If any of the items cannot be obtained, <coughs> excuse. <coughs> None of the items are locked. Rather, the transaction waits and then tries again to lock all the item it needs. 
That is how we handle with the locking protocol, deadlock prevention protocol, not the locking protocol, deadlock prevention protocol, because I said locking brings about deadlock. So how do we handle deadlocks? We have a deadlock prevention protocol, whereby if you need an item to work on, you have to lock it first before you can work on it. If you can't work on it, then there's no need of locking that item. You have to finish. We have to wait for that item to be unlocked so that you can be able uh, uh, so, 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 so that you can be able to handle that aspect of, uh, of, of ensuring there's no, there's no what, there's no deadlocks. But now this one had an issue. This, this led to non-concurrency. concurrency in transactions. What do I mean? Because it led to non-concurrency in transactions, it means that if I needed to acquire a lock in advance, then it means that only one transaction can execute in a, in a database. So this is not concurrency. So this is a problem. So they had to find a turnaround. So they had to find a turnaround. The above. They had to find a turnaround to the above, and the, there was a second protocol uh, which also limits concurrency, though to a lesser extent, and it involves ordering all data items in a database and making sure that a transaction needs several items. We lock them according to an order, okay? So that was the second way. So you order all the data items in a database and ensure that several items, we lock them according to an ascending order. So, that was one way in which you could avoid the other one. The other one, there was no aspect of uh, ordering. So the other one, there was no aspect of ordering. So meaning that if it locked, it locked. So a turnaround to the above was ordering all the data items in the database and making sure that a transaction let me just put it down here so that you are not I'm touching on here. So the first one had that turnaround, it had that issue. So it had the issue of not having concurrency. But now we used to have another one whereby you had an ordering protocol. Okay. So you need to have an ordering protocol. That's the thing you need to have. Here we just have a deadlock prevention protocol. But now here in the deadlock prevention protocol, you add another ordering protocol. And this ordering protocol will order, will make sure that transaction, uh, will order all the data items in the database, making them sure that a transaction that needs several items, we lock them according to that order, let's say in ascending order. If I need a data item, I will lock them in terms of the priority I need that data item. So if it's of higher priority, I put it in slot one. If it's of lesser priority, I put it in slot N, because in most cases you can have Whatever I need as a priority is not a priority in another transaction which is using it. So that was one way in which we could be able to handle that aspect of, uh, of, uh, of what, of, uh, of, of, of having deadlock. So that's one way, having deadlock prevention protocol. And you need, an item needs to lock that item before it works. It had an issue with concurrency. Then they came up about with improving that deadlock prevention protocol by ordering and by having an ordering protocol inside it, whereby transactions needed to transactions needed to to order items in either ascending or descending order, so that they could be able to access those aspects. Now, another thing, uh, another another mechanism. Another protocol, another mechanism which was used for deadlock detection. If I may just uh, put, just draw just to signal a partition. No. Nope. Nope. So. Another protocol which was uh, used was what we call wait for and would wait. Wait die. Okay. 
weight die and something called wood weight deadlock prevention. Now, this is the second method. This is the second method. This one here is the third method. I mean, no, 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 no. This one is the second. This is the second. This is the third. And the other one which we had discussed, the cyclic, uh, the, the weight for graph, that was the first method of handling deadlocks. So we have deadlock prevention method. Then, then we have weight diet and wood weight deadlock prevention method. Now, this one was, uh, was quite uh, was quite uh, aspect was was was, was quite uh, was, was 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 quite improved, and this one this product this used these uh, used the aspect of timestamps. Now we are talking about timestamps. These used aspect of timestamps. Please use the aspect of style stamps to order to order transactions in a database. To order transactions in a database. Okay. So the, there are two schemes: the weight die and wood weight deadlock prevention protocols, and both of them used time stops okay so what it means is that there are some rules which are required there are rules which are required and the first rule was the timestamp ordering so there are rules required the first one was timestamp ordering. In timestamp ordering, basically, you, remember, you know what's timestamp. A timestamp indicates when a transaction starts and when a transaction ends. So whenever a transaction needed to start, it needed to acquire timestamp, indicating the time it has started that transaction. So the rules required in the first one was uh, timestamp ordering. And the other one was, uh, th that was the first one, OK? So the timestamps were ordered according to how the transaction started. Hence, if transaction T1 started before T2, then basically the timestamp ordering would be in the form that T1 is less than T2. So basically meaning it would have been in that form. If T1 started earlier than T2, okay? If T1 starts before T2, then it means that T1 will have a lesser timestamp protocol than t2 basically meaning if i start at time zero and you come at time one i will have a zero and you'll have a one so basically that's why it has timestamp t1 is less than timestamp t2 basically meaning that if a transaction starts at zero then the next one will be one one is greater than zero and the next one will be two two is greater than one or zero so they'll be having that aspect of uh, of, of timestamps now Another aspect would be, so we have that timestamp order. We have that timestamp order. Now, all the transactions have smaller timestamp. This can be easily understood and remember in the following ways. Okay, so if you're born at 10 a.m., then a smaller transaction is born at 11 a.m. That is purely what I was trying to explain. So, the two schemes use transaction to prevent deadlock or weight die and would wait. So, you, first of all, you have you have those uh, timestamps you have created. So the first one was timestamps. The second one was to implement implement two schemes, which are here: weight die and wood weight. You implement either of them. So what is weight die? So weight die is uh, 
if TS, if you have two transactions, and all of the transaction is older than the other one, then the, the older transaction is allowed to wait, otherwise it is aborted, and it's restarted later with the same timestamp, wait, die. So meaning that you abort older transactions. Okay, you abort older transaction. In which day you abort older transaction. In would wait, you abort newer transactions. Okay. So what does that that basically means? So here would wait. If I was to put it in simpler terms, so wait die. If TSI meaning that transaction ti started earlier than tj so ti is older than tj then ti is allowed to wait otherwise a bot otherwise a bot ti so meaning that if i started earlier and i'm waiting for a resource which you have i'm allowed to wait otherwise when it comes to killing remember when you're looking at uh, wait for graphs we say that if there's a cyclic kind of a, of, 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 of a deadlock, then one transaction has to be aborted. Now here in this sense, now we have implemented the timestamp protocol. Now it means that we have to kill the earlier or the older transaction. Okay, that's wait, that's wait done. Now would wait is different. I say that now would wait is different. Now, would wait, uh, still the same scenario, TI is older than TJ, then about TJ, and restart it later with the same what? Timestamp, otherwise TI is allowed to wait. Here, you have to look at one thing. All the transactions are allowed to wait. That is the thing which is unique about these two schemes. And I say they require the use of timestamps. And remember, when you are talking about uh, about about weight for graphs and remember all of these are implemented in weight for graphs we're just improving the weight for graphs okay so we're improving the weight for graphs and one way i've seen is to have a deadlock prevention protocol second one is to have an ordering uh, protocol third one is to have weight die and wood weight deadlock prevention protocol so we're adding this protocol to the weight for graphs so what it basically means is that if you have an if you have an older timestamp you are allowed to wait that is unique. And remember I said that when you are aborting, you look at the history. And remember I said that all the transactions are never aborted. Remember that's what I said. All the transactions are never aborted because these transactions must have done a lot of updates. So you cannot abort them. You cannot abort them. The only transaction which are aborted are newer transactions. And that is what we see in both of these schemes, wait, die, and would wait. TI is allowed to wait. But in wait, die, you can abort TI and start it later with the same what? Timestamp. Meaning when you restart it later with the same timestamp, it is given a higher priority. Now, would wait, you abort TI, I mean TJ. You abort TJ and restart it later with the same timestamp. Otherwise, TI is allowed to wait. So here you have that aspect whereby in both scenarios, TI is allowed to wait. And in both scenarios, only in one scenario is where you can abort TI, but it's not recommended. But in both scenarios, in both scenarios, TJ, the newer transaction can never wait. It will have to be aborted. So we have that, uh, that, uh, that thing. Now, that's why I said in uh, both schemes, they end up aborting the angle of the two transactions that may be involved in a deadlock. So that is one thing which we have to see. Otherwise, about TI. Here, TI in both of them, T, the older transaction is never aborted. Remember, I said that. So, meaning that even in wait die, TJ at the end of the day will be aborted. That's one thing you have to remember. At the end of the day, TJ may be aborted. Okay. So, so that is 
are the third way in which you can be able to prevent deadlocks. The first way I've said is wait for graphs. We say wait for graphs have an issue of not having uh, concurrency. And then we came and decided to have a deadlock prevention protocol. And then we came and had an ordering protocol. And then we came and did a wait deadlock prevention protocol. So both of them, uh, this weight die and wood weight deadlock prevention protocol, it's good, but it has an aspect of whether it can abort even transactions which are not involved in deadlock. So there's that aspect which you have to be really careful when you're handling uh, this kind of weight die and wood weight deadlock prevention protocol. So it is something which is uh, which which is currently in use. And if you look at most databases that we have today, they any all transactions we have today, they have must have a timestamp. And timestamps actually in a database are really important because with these timestamps, they are the ones which will say which transaction to be killed and which are not to be killed. So remember, I said that one mechanism was by having uh, what we call locking. Now the second mechanism which I've implemented here is timestamps. Timestamps are really important. And the one way we can implement timestamps is by implementing it with locking mechanisms. So you have a lock and you have a timestamp. Now, when it comes to aborting a transaction, we look, we look at the timestamp of that transaction. And earlier transaction timestamps are never aborted. That is, all the transactions are never aborted. In any sense, they are never aborted. They usually let to run. Only if there's an issue with that transaction, then can it be killed. Only then can it be can it be killed. So that is about uh, deadlock uh, prevention. Now. Uh, there's another aspect, uh, because I've started talking about timestamp ordering. Timestamp, as I said, is one of the mechanisms which is implemented. Here we have seen timestamp implemented with uh, deadlock prevention. So it is, it, 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 is, it, it, it is a really good mechanism that is usually used for handling, uh, for handling, for handling uh, deadlocks and all the other mechanisms that can uh, come with, with, with the issues that it may be bringing about. Now, okay. Another thing which I wanted to talk about. Mm -hmm. We've talked about deadlocks, we have talked about uh, Timestamp lock based binary two phase locking, strict two phase locking. Now, timestamp based protocols. Now, let me talk about timestamp based protocols. So, we have talked about uh, locking protocols, and locking protocols, as we have seen, they also implement timestamps, but these are known as weak die and wood weight deadlock prevention protocols. Now, what Is the timestamp ordering protocol. Timestamp ordering. Timestamp ordering protocol. Okay, timestamp ordering protocol. So Timestamp ordering protocol is whereby you order transactions according to their timestamp and usually have a schedule, okay? And this schedule must be serializable. Meaning if it's serializable, meaning that transactions must follow one another. So that's why we have the aspect of, uh, of timestamp ordering, okay? Now we have what you call the timestamp ordering schedule or TO or the equivalent serial schedule. And this TO is the mechanism which is implemented in a concurrent database to order transactions according to their, to their timestamps. Okay. Now, 
One thing we have with two-phase locking is that with two-phase locking, there's no aspect of timestamp ordering, okay? There's no, time, there's no aspect of ordering a transaction. It's when you come there, you lock an, an item, and then you go around with it. But with the timestamp ordering protocol, it means that there has to be a serializable schedule which is followed. They must have an order, okay? They must have an order. Now, when you're having an order, it means that if I come earlier, I'm allowed to lock any data item before a younger transaction comes, okay? So we have the timestamp ordering protocol. So timestamp ordering protocol ensures serializability among transactions in their conflicting read and write operations. So timestamp is basically there to handle uh, serializability in transactions. Serializability in transaction operations. Basically, read and write operations read and write operations so basically what it means is that uh, so what it basically means is that the timestamp ordering will have a different timestamp for read and it will have a different timestamp for write so so the to algorithm associates with each other items two timestamp values so that's what it does so the TO algorithm, TO means the timestamp ordering algorithm. Associates with each data item, database item X, two timestamp values, read TX, largest timestamp among all timestamp of transaction that are successful read item X, and right transaction, the largest of all the timestamps of transactions that have uh, that have successfully written item. So we have those two, those two, those two transaction timestamps. So we have TO. So TO is the time is the timestamp ordering protocol associated with each database item. Two timestamp values read tx and write tx it has those two now basically what it means is that whenever a transaction tries to issue a read or a write operation the timestamp ordering protocol compares the timestamps of t with the read and write timestamp of another transaction so if you have two transactions you have transaction a and transaction b it will have to compare those read and write uh, timestamps and ensure the timestamp order of execution of the transaction is not violated. Basically, that is what it does. Okay. So basically, it has uh, it has uh, some kind of uh, it compares it compares it compares these transactions, meaning that. If you're reading, if you're issuing a read operation, it will look at the timestamp for that read. And it will check if you're older or newer. If you're newer, then it means you're not given precedence over the older one. If you're older, you're given precedence. Remember, remember what I said, in this whole thing, older transactions are given higher precedence. It's basically like, come on, Mze, ukenda kwa bank. Ukenda kwa bank. If you're going to a bank, Technically speaking, you're, you cannot be given first precedence of an older or a pregnant woman. It's them who are given the first precedence, okay? It's them who are given the first precedence, especially older people. Because you, you're younger, you can wait, but an older person has to wait. And it's the same scenario if you're in a bank in a queuing system. Remember queuing system from your, dat from your data structures and algorithms, the people, the first in, first, first out. That is still the same mechanism that is employed in concurrency. If I issued a right operation, the first one, why would I come and be killed for you to create an operation after you have done that thing? So it has to compare. So we have 
these two kinds of scenarios. So you have these two kinds of scenarios. If transaction TI, so we have the first scenario. Transaction TI issues a read operation. And the first one is this. So this is the first scenario. If transaction TI issues a read X operation, that is timestamp TY is less than the timestamp for X, then we reject. Secondly, if the timestamp for TI is greater than or equal to the timestamp, then it's executed. Then it's ex executed. Now there's something here. Now, let me, let, me, let me check, let me check, let me check. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Something I was trying to look at this aspect of locking. So locking, we look at the timestamp here. We look at the timestamp. Transaction TI issues a redex operation. TI is less than timestamp X. Than a write operation, okay. Right timestamp if a transaction issues are in. Oh, okay, 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 okay. It's greater than. It's greater than than a timestamp. Oh, this one. Yeah. Redex operation. This transaction TS. This transaction TI issues a read operation. And this operation is greater than the right. W stands for right. Okay, W stands for right timestamp of X. The operation is rejected. Meaning that this TI is trying to read. It is an earlier transaction. It is an earlier transaction that needs to read an aspect that is going to be worked upon by another transaction X, right X then that operation is rejected. If TSI is greater than or equal to the right timestamp, then it is executed. If it's greater than, then it means it came after the right timestamp. If it's less than, it means it came before the right timestamp. I think that is where the whole debacle was trying to come in because it's, it's really kind. Because here yeah, they're saying if they read or write, if read of transaction X, is greater than the read of transaction T. Or if the write of transaction X is greater than transaction T, then abort and roll back transaction T and reject the operation. This should be done because some transaction with timestamp ordering with the timestamp greater than transaction T. So they're greater than transaction T and hence after T in the timestamp order and should be value T as a chance that's value T. There's something if t if x is greater than t then roll back t and reject the operation 
I'll try, you know, there's something, because here what I know is that, so here it, terms, it ensures the conflicting read and write, the responsibility of the protocol that, so these are, these are conflicting protocols. So if a transaction TI issues a read operation, and that read operation is less than the timestamp of X, then we, oh yeah, true, it is true. If read is greater than write, then we yeah, are true, 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 true. We look for the largest. Remember, here we said, Read the read timestamp of item X. This is the largest timestamp among all the timestamp transactions that have successfully read item X. And write X is the largest of all the timestamp transactions that have successfully written item X. So meaning that this one, the read is greater than write. So it is given, the read is, uh, I mean, the read is less than the write. So if the read is less than the write, then it means that write has more precedence than the transaction TI. Hence, the operation is rejected. But here we see that the read is greater than the write. Hence, the transaction is executed. Yeah, we have these associations. So if read is greater than write, if read is greater than write, read is given precedence. If write is greater than read, then write is given precedence. Because here, in the first one, write is greater. Here it means read is less than write. Here means read is greater than write. In other times, if you do inversion, it means write is greater than read. So write is given first precedence. Here I was trying to look at that aspect because I was trying to look at if it's a timestamp ordering protocol, if it's larger, if it's larger, meaning that it, is a, it has executed for a bit of period of time, then it means that, then it means that this thing is, uh, it started earlier than you. It started earlier than you, so it cannot read. So that's why operation is rejected. So this one, less than, it means that this one started earlier. True. Right started earlier than the read. Hence the operation is rejected. This one means the read started earlier than the right. It is just about the Boolean inversion. You know, Boolean inversion, sometimes it can really confuse you. The logic, which one is greater? Because if A is less than B, if A is less than B, then inversely means B is greater than A. So it's about playing around with those aspects. So this is the timestamp ordering protocol that you're having. Okay. Now, if the second one scenario is if a transaction TI issues a right operation. If a T transaction TI issues a right operation, then this is not, uh, no. Uh, what, what do I uh, do? Okay. Then, first one. So if a transaction TI issues a right operation, then we have this one, TI. So here TI wants to write, and this one is read, meaning that the write is less than the read. Obviously, it will be rejected, meaning the read has a larger timestamp than the write, so it will be rejected. Secondly, if the write, if the write is less than, You have this second option. If the timestamp TI is less than the timestamp of another one, operation rejected and TI is rolled back. Meaning that here, you the first one you're attempting to write on an item that has been given a read timestamp earlier than you. And the second one, you're trying to write on an item that has been given an earlier time than you, then it will be rejected. But thirdly, if yours is greater, third one is if the 
less than or equal, then operation is approved. I think those are the two major aspects which we have to look at because we have read and write. So you have those two scenarios, read and write. Read and write operation. So basically it means that the read and the write operation have to be larger. So larger timestamps are given higher precedence than uh, than, than, than lower timestamps, okay? Larger timestamps have given precedence than lower timestamps. So basically that is what it means. Okay, let me just confirm something. Yeah, this one, you know, this one is inverted. It's inverted. So that is the that is the time the timestamp. Uh, That is the timestamp of uh, that is the timestamp ordering protocol, which is implemented in uh, what do you call implemented in implemented in a database. So uh, that is what I wanted us to discuss today. And uh, I believe that uh, we, 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 we have uh, discussed a few of aspects here and there, which I believe you'll be able to get them and uh, be able to understand. Now, I have some work. In that PDF for chapter 13 I gave you, there's an aspect which you call granularity of data items. Polarity of data items. And uh, what I want you to think about is uh, how does the granularity of data items affect the performance of concurrency control? So in terms of this, I want you to read that. And then you answer this question, which I believe we shall, I shall, I shall start off from there next week. How does the granularity of data items affect the performance of concurrency control? What factors affect the selection of granularity size for data items? So I believe next week, uh, I think I'll be, we'll be having a live session. This is the first thing we shall, I shall need to discuss. You shall need to tell me. And actually, I think, actually, I think I'll give it just like an assignment. I'll give it just like an assignment so that uh, it can be quite clear and uh, easy for those people, easy for us to look at. And then I would also like you to go and read on multiversion. On multiversion, two phase locking. That's another variation of 2PL. So I'd like you to go and read on that. It's still in that PDF which I'd given to you. And that PDF was specifically talking about concurrency control and how we can be able to manage concurrency control and which I believe for today we have finished about concurrency control. So uh, these two aspects, they are really important, my dear students. So granularity. and multiversion. Even I've changed the color. So those are two important items which I need you to go guys and read and check on. So as usual, this video shall be uploaded on YouTube. So I'll share the link.
So thank you. Mm-hmm. 